this weekend, one of the fastest 100 mile races in the entire country is to take place on the Towpath Trail following the Ohio and Erie Canal Way. Last year, five of the top 25 men's 100 mile times across all races came from the Canal Corridor 100, and two of the top 25 women's times across all races also came from the Canal Corridor 100. This race has an incredible history of fast times, but on top of that, they may be the most dynamic race organization on the entire East Coast. You know, runners are running very fast times in the middle of the summer. Well, how do you make those times quicker? Move the race to October and go head to head with Tunnel Hill as one of the fastest East Coast 100s in the fall. This weekend is gonna be an absolute spectacle. Let's dive into my predictions. Let's start things off on the women's side, fifth place. I've got to go into an incredible runner from Virginia, and that's Lisa Jones. Lisa Jones finished fifth place at the Grayson Highlands 50 miler in May, running nine hours and 29 minutes. Uh, just before that, in April, she took 10th place at the Long Creek 60K, running eight hours and 17 minutes. Uh, previously, you know, she's finished ninth place at the Yeti 100 back in 2019. My biggest concern for Elisa coming into this race is does she have the top end speed that the canal course just offers you? You need to have that top end speed at a race like the canal quarter 100. Does she have it? We're going to find out this weekend. Lisa Jones, I've got you finishing fifth place. Fourth place coming to us all the way from Pennsylvania. It's Jessica Grinspan. And you know, every single person that's on this list on the women's side from number four to number one has won a 100 miler before. That's just the level of competition that you get at the Canal Corridor 100. Uh, you know, Jessica won the Pine Creek 100 in 2020, running 1906. In 2019, she actually took second place at that race, running 1918. Uh, you know, she's finished fourth place at the Dirty German Endurance Fest, 50 miler in 2019, running 950. You know, that's a Philadelphia race and you know how much I love those races. Uh, she's someone who can easily run uh, sub 18 at a race like this, or maybe quicker, you know, sub 18 may be a little generous. She may be able to go 17, 16 highs and something like that, but I think she's gonna definitely be in contention. I've got you finishing fourth place. Third place in the only runner from Ohio on the women's side that I have in my top five predictions, and it's Deborah Horn. You know, she ran Canal Corridor 100 this past year, and she finished fourth place in 20 hours, 33 minutes. She's an incredibly experienced ultra runner. You know, her first result on ultra signup is from 1999. You know, I think she's probably going to get a little laugh out of that because obviously ultra signup didn't exist in 1999. But you know, she's someone who has over 20 to 25 plus years of ultra running experience and that's going to totally bode well for her at this race. You know, she ran six days in the dome, a 48 hour event in June and managed to make it 100 miles there. Uh, it'll be exciting to see her build upon her impressive finish uh, at Canal this past year. Deborah Horn, I've got you finishing third place. And finishing in the runner up spot on the women's side, second place. I've got to go into an incredible runner from Oregon. You know, I'm repping the brand, the Columbia River Gorge here for this runner. It's Pam Smith. Uh, you know, she's looking for her second Ohio 100 mile win uh, in her career. She won the Mohican 100 in 2019, running 19 hours and 44 minutes at that race. Uh, she ran the IAU 24 hour world championships in France in 2019 and she finished fourth place running 152 miles. In the summer of 2018, she finished 20th at Western States 100 and just literally a month later, so the calendar date a month later, she got second place at the Badwater 135. Uh, just an incredible runner and one of the most experienced runners in our entire sport, and she should have absolutely no issues at this race. Pam Smith, I get to finishing second place. In taking home the win on the women's side, coming to us all the way from Alabama, it's Mika Morgan. You know, she finished 
third place at the Jackpot Ultra 100 miler race back in April running 1444. Uh, just before that, she won the Delano Peak 50 miler running seven hours and 14 minutes at that race. Uh, in 2019, she ran 130 miles at dawn to dusk to dawn. 24 hour event. Uh, she also has a third place finish at the Badwater 135 in 2018 and so many other results. Uh, let's just name some races that she's won. Maybe that'll just save some time here instead of going through all of her top five and top three finishes, et cetera, et cetera. These are the races that she's won, you know, in recent years. You know, Daytona 100, chalk it up. Wildcat Ultras 100, it seems like a high school musical race. I'm all about it. Chalk it up is another W. Keys Ultra 100, another W there. Uh, Mika Morgan is gonna have absolutely no issue at this race, I've got you finishing first place at Canal Corridor 100 this year. Let's transition over to the men's side, fifth place. I've got to go into an incredible runner from Ohio. Everyone knows him, everyone loves him. It's Jeremy Pope. You know, he finished sixth place at the Twisted Branch 100K in August, running 13 hours in one minute. Uh, he absolutely crushed their burning over 50 miler earlier this year as well, winning with a time of seven hours, 24 minutes. Uh, before that, in June, he won the Mohican Marathon. Uh, the one result though that kind of jumps off the page, and I thought I found most interesting uh, from Jeremy, you know, it was from JFK in 2020. He finished 17th place. And for those of you that know JFK 50 miler, I'm sure everyone knows it's one of the most popular popular races on the East Coast, it's always a super competitive field. And you know, just like Canal, this is like the one race that Jeremy's done that is just totally stacked and filled with so many incredible runners. I think he's gonna use that experience from JFK in 2020 to catapult him to success at the Canal Corridor 100 this year. Jeremy Pope, I've got you finishing fifth place. Fourth place, I've got it going to Davin Osveg, and he took second place at the Indiana Trail 100 back in 2019, running 16 hours and 53 minutes. In 2018, he took third place at the Mohican 100, running 21 hours and five minutes. Uh, he's won a few 100 milers in his day as well. Let's just name a couple of them. Oil Creek 100, He's actually won that race three times, so that's insanely impressive. Sulphur Springs 100, chalked that up as another W, and the Burning River 100, chalked that up as another W. Uh, there's incredible stout competition at this race, like we've mentioned previously, but I think if he runs his own race, he should be just fine. Davin Osweig, I've got you finishing fourth place. Third place, I've got to go to Is Merkel, and Is has quickly become one of Ohio's fastest flat 100 mile runners in recent years, last year, he finished fifth place at the Canal Corridor 100, running 14 hours and 23 minutes. In 2019, he won the Mad City 100K in Wisconsin, running six hours and 54 minutes for a 100K. That's just absolutely a moving for a race distance like that. Uh, for those of you that know is well, you know that he'll be coming into this race looking for the win. I've got you finishing third place. In taking home the runner-up spot, second place, I've got it going to Paul Jacobs. And Paul is never ever sneaking under the radar at another one Ohio 100 miler ever again. You know, he's returning to his second one Ohio 100 miler this year in June. He finished second place at the Mohican 100, running 16 hours and 51 minutes. Uh, in April, he finished sixth place at the Promised Land 50K, running five hours and one minute there. Uh, he's done all types of races in recent years from like JFK 50 to Old Dominion 100. You know, he's won that race in 2016. Uh, he's someone who's just gonna absolutely come into Ohio and continue to dominate the scene. You know, I left him off the Mohican 100 prediction video and I almost like, they almost canceled me for it. You know, they were like, what are you doing? Why are you leaving this incredible runner off of your prediction videos? And I'm never, ever, ever gonna make that mistake again because Paul Jacobs deserves to be a, a top pick in any race that he enters. Paul Jacobs, I've got you finishing second place. In taking home the win on the men's side, coming to us all the way from Ohio, 
It's Pete Kostelnik. It has to be. There's only one person that's going to take home the win at this year's race, and it's going to be Pete. You know, he won the race in 2018, running 14 hours and four minutes. Uh, just in April, you know, he won the Jackpot Ultra 24-hour race, running 112 miles there. Uh, just before that, in March, so April, March, you know, go back one month, he won the Prairie Spirit Trail 100, running 14 hours in 40 minutes. Uh, you know, last year he won the Beasts of Burden winter version, uh, running 16 hours and 54 minutes there. Uh, he's a multiple time winner of the Badwater 135. Everyone in the world knows what Pete Kostelnik is capable, capable of, and it won't even be close. Pete, we've got you winning this one by a landslide. We're so excited to see you take home the top spot at this year's Canal Corridor 100. And before we get out of here, you know, I want to mention that I've had a bunch of people in recent years reach out to me and mention that, you know, Canal Corridor 100 might be Ohio's best 100 mile race. You know, the course isn't for everyone. I understand that. But, you know, if you want a race that's buttoned up organization wise, you know, A stations are phenomenal, you know, uh, everything else that kind of goes with the race is just top notch. I think the Canal Corridor 100 might have surpassed all the other 100 milers in Ohio in just a, such a short amount of time, and it's incredible to see. I'm excited personally to see it firsthand this weekend. Uh, for those of you that missed out on the Road to 100 with JD3, check out a couple of those most recent ones. But you know, JD3 will be out there running the Canal Corridor 100. I'm super excited to kind of see him out there. Absolutely crush that race. If you see John, you know, make sure to hoot and holler, and uh, you know, he'll kind of love that as he's going to on his way to finish his first 100 mile race at the Canal Corridor 100. That's all I got for this video. If I missed any snubs, you guys know the drill. Like, put them in the comment section below and let me know who I missed. You know, there's so many people in a race like this. Uh, I wanna know who you think are gonna finish in the top spots. If you don't subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to us. We really appreciate it. If you're gonna be out at the Canal Corridor 100, keep your eye out for me and I'll keep my eye out for you. We look forward to seeing everyone this weekend.